Good morning, and welcome to Centennial Presbyterian Church Virtual Worship, Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather together to worship our loving, nurturing God, who, like a mother, knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go, and comforts us in times of need. Praise God, the source and sustainer of life. Amen. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day. So I hope and pray that God bless us as we celebrate Mother's Day today. Let us pray. Steadfast and loving God, you are our refuge in times of trouble and our shelter when we are afraid. In you alone we trust. In you we see our way forward and discover what is authentic. In you we find abundant life. And so we offer you our worship and love as the God who creates and gives life to the world. As the Son who preached the truth of the good news and the Holy Spirit who guides us this day and always. Steadfast and loving God, we confess that while we know Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, we have often failed to follow him. We sometimes doubt his wisdom and truth. Rather than live the life he offers, we carve out our own path and pursue our own desires. Forgive us for the many ways we have fallen short of your purpose for our lives. Give us courage to follow Jesus who continues to show us the way. We pray in Jesus' name, and we pray as he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. Know that in Christ you are forgiven. Accept God's grace and forgiveness this day and extend it to others for Jesus' sake. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. It's children's time. It's, it's your time. Let me read the scripture for you. It is from John 17, uh, 6 to 8. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I'm sure that all of you know that it is Mother's Day. So what are some ways you can show your mother that you love her? Well, you might help out around the house. You could clean your room or empty the trash. You could show her that you love her by obeying her when she tells you to do something. It is easy to tell your mom that you love her, but if you really love her, your actions will show it. So what is something you, your mother asked you to do, but you did not want to do? What happened when you disobeyed? Did you get a restriction or loss of privileges, like watching TV or playing games? Disobeying costs us something. God is like a parent to us. So when Jesus was on 
earth, he tried to protect us and help those who were confused about what decisions to make in their life. Like a parent, sometimes God asks us to do things for our own good. Sometimes he asks us to avoid things that we think are good for us, but are not. God has good things for us, but at times we neglect to listen when he calls us. So let us listen to God and to our mothers. Let us pray. God, help me listen to my parents and to you even when I do not want to. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 8 to 16. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you, and in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances, to say to the captives, come out, and to those in the darkness, be free. They will, be, they will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of a swan. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand, and your walls are ever before me. The second scripture reading for today is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 12 to 13. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse her, and be carried on her arms, and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, no one deserves a special day all to herself uh, more than uh, today's mom. A cartoon showed a psychologist uh, talking to his patient. Let's see, he said. You spend 50% uh, of your energy on your job, 50% uh, on your husband, and 50% on your children. I think I see your problem. A scene on a church sign. If evolution is true, how come mothers still have only two hands? According to Hallmark in Canada, there are about 9.8 million mothers in 2011. Mother's Day is widely reported as the peak day of the year for long-distance phone calls. 
Mother's Day is the busiest day of the year for many restaurants. And retailers report that Mother's Day is the second highest gift giving holiday in Canada. Christmas is the highest. Unfortunately, this year, uh, due to a pandemic situation, we may not be able to celebrate the Mother's Day as we used to. But we want to celebrate the day in a new and special way. Every one of us has a reason to celebrate this weekend. And I'm assuming all of us here today have a mother. And motherhood has been considered a special vocation uh, through the ages. Mothers have always filled an important, necessary, unreplaceable role in society. Uh, mothers have the delicate mission of shaping the child's life in the first years. And mothers are widely recognized as being the strongest single influence in a person's life. Mothers are nurses, are doctors, psychologists, counselors, shoppers, and coaches. Mothers are developers of personalities, molders of vocabularies, and shapers of attitudes. Mothers are teachers, mothers are disciplinarians, mothers are cleaning ladies, some mothers are gardeners and mowers of lawns. And most mothers understand that baking cookies is more important than washing windows too. Uh, we are familiar with the idea of God as a caring father, protecting his children. Less common is the depiction of God as a mother. But in many passages, we find a feminine side of God, a motherly face of God. And Isaiah 66 says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. God pays a wonderful tribute to motherhood in Isaiah as he refers to his love for his children as a mother's love. And Jesus paid uh, the same tribute to motherhood when he spoke of his concern and love for Jerusalem, being typified by a hen gathering her chicks under her wing. Mother's Day gives us an opportunity to extol the mother-like qualities of God. First, God comforts us by his uh, generosity. Here, here now, says mother, uh, drying our tears. Let me fix your favorite dessert. Come into the kitchen. We can talk for a while. She is generous, not only with her goods, but with her time, understanding, and love. A mother who had uh, 12 children was asked which one she loved the best. Her answer, the one who's sick until he gets well, and the one who is away until he gets back home. Again, that's the way God is. He heals, gladdens, sympathizes, loves and cares as no mother could. A T. Dewitt Tarmish said, Mother, there was the bank where we deposited all our hurts and worries. The most generous act of God on our behalf was when Jesus offered himself as the atoning the sacrifice for our sin. Second, God comforts by his presence. Think of this for a moment. 
What is a house without a mother? Her presence means comfort, love, and service. I suppose that is why today is very special. Because we recognize that mother's love is probably the closest example we have to God's love. It is a love that goes through the valley of the shadow of death to bring life into being. It is a love that sacrifices itself over and over again and would even dare to lay down its life for its own offspring. The story is told out of World War II and the Holocaust that took the lives of millions of people of Solomon Rosenberg and his family. It is a true story. Solomon Rosenberg, his wife, their two sons, his mother and father were arrested and placed in a Nazi concentration camp. It was a labor camp and the rules were simple. As long as you can do your work, you are permitted to leave. When you become too weak to do your work, then you are exterminated. Uh, Rosenberg watched his mother and father marched off to their death. And he knew that next would be his youngest son, David, because David had always been a frail child. Every evening, Rosenberg came back into the barracks after his hours of labor and searched for the faces of his family. So when he found them, they, were huddled toge they would huddle together, embrace one another, and thank God for another day of life. One day, Rosenberg came back and didn't see those familiar faces. He finally discovered his oldest son, Joshua, in a corner, huddled, weeping, and praying. He said, Josh, tell me it's not true. Joshua turned and said, It is true, Papa. Today, David was not strong enough to do his work, so they came, after, they came for him. But where is your mother? asked Mr. Rosenberg. Oh, Papa, he said. When they came for David, he was afraid and he cried. Mama said, There is nothing to be afraid of, David. She took his hand and went with him. I pray that if you have felt that you have had to walk through that valley alone so many times, that you will recognize that there is a hand reaching out to you saying, there is nothing to be afraid of. I will go with you. And I pray that you will recognize that that one has already gone through the valley of the shadow for you and made it possible for you to live forever. See here, the word of the Lord again. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. Mothers are soft voice saying, I love you. And, mod and mothers are a link to God. A child's first impression of God's love. Mothers are all of these things and much, much more. I suppose that is why today is very special. Because we recognize that mother's love is probably the closest example we have to God's love. That is motherhood. Mothers, this is your day. May God bless you in it. Amen. Let us pray. May the Lord who brought us to birth by His Spirit, strengthen us for the Christian life. 
May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is constant as a mother's care send us out to live and work for others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. If we were able to gather physically, this would be the time when we would prepare for offering. It would be the time when we would get our offering out of our purse or our wallet and be ready for the plate to be passed to us. Perhaps we would also spend a moment praying that God would use what we bring for his glory. Today, of course, we can't do the first part, but we can join in prayer for the furthering of God's kingdom here at Centennial as we prepare to give. Pretty much all of the expenditures of the congregation continue despite us not gathering physically. Wages, utilities, supplies, communications, and all our regular costs to operate remain, together with our responsibilities to Presbytery and General Assembly to further the mission of God's Kingdom in Canada and beyond. Giving these days can take three forms. First, we can pay by check. Please place your check in your offering envelope and insert that in an outer envelope and mail it to the church. The church's address is 103 Pinetown Place, Calgary, Alberta, T1Y 5J1, and please mark your outer envelope, Attention Envelope Secretary. You may wish to consider writing post-dated checks for the remainder of the pandemic or for the remainder of the year. Include those in your outer envelope and we will deposit them as they become current. Secondly, you can register for the pre-authorized remittance program. This results in an automatic charge to your checking account on a monthly basis. A form for this is on the church website under stewardship. The payment can be changed or discontinued upon your decision and advice to the envelope secretary. Third, and our newest form of giving, is by Interact eTransfer. If you do online banking, you can send an Interact eTransfer to the following envelope secretary at centennialchurch.ca and note in your transfer in the comments section your envelope number. This is a safe, convenient way to pay and results in no cost to either the donor or the congregation. It too can be set up as a recurring payment over a period of time over which you have complete control. Please prayerfully consider these needs of Centennial as we bring our virtual offering. Let us pray. A generous God, we bless you for your gift of life, renewed through Christ's love and through springtime growth in fields and gardens. Bless the gifts we bring to you. 
May they offer hope and renewal in the world you love. As we serve in the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <music>